We're taking off the kid gloves and tackling one of the most infamous gore films of all time, Hideshi Hino's 1985 splatter classic, Guinea Pig, Flower of Flesh and Blood. Grab your butcher's apron and put on your splash guard because things are about to get bloody. <laughs> Welcome back, Gore Geeks. I'm Mike Bracken, better known as the Horror Geek. Looking for rants, raves, and reviews about your favorite horror films? You've come to the right place. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel for more horrific reviews and features, and click the annoying little bell button to get alerts when I post new content. And now, with all that crap out of the way, let's get ready. In the annals of gore film history, few movies are more revered than the guinea pig series. This collection of gruesome and bizarre Japanese shorts has been the stuff of cult film legends since they debuted in 1985, a reputation that was only magnified in 1991 when Charlie Sheen turned a copy of Flower of Flesh and Blood over to the FBI, convinced he'd seen a real snuff film. But more on that in a bit. Let's dive in and talk about the film first, shall we? There's not much plot to share here. Flower of Flesh and Blood runs for roughly 45 minutes, has minimal dialogue, and exudes faux snuff film ambiance from start to finish. The film opens with some Japanese text as a framing device. Basically, it's a note from director Hideshi Hino explaining that he received a package with an 8mm film like this one inside, along with a bunch of pictures and a 19-page letter from a fan. We then cut to an unseen videographer stalking a young woman through a city in Japan. After toying with her for a while, he finally makes his move, chloroforming her in a deserted park. Man, this is the creepiest episode of the Red Shoe Diaries ever. And half of you youngsters probably don't even get that reference. Things then cut to a title card. And this is probably our first clue that Flower of Flesh and Blood is a movie. I can't imagine most snuff films have a title card. At this point, Flower of Flesh and Blood gets down to business. The setting shifts to a grimy, blood-splattered room where our victim is tied to the bed and menaced by a man in samurai garb who first drugs her so she can experience the ecstasy of becoming the Red Flower and then ritually dismembers her. It's the feel-good movie of the year! But honestly, that's the plot. Guy stalks girl, guy kidnaps girl, guy ties girl to the bed and cuts her into pieces, then smokes a cigarette before showing you his trophy collection from past victims. Then freeze frame onto another girl just to let you know he's still out there. It's pretty much the formula for every good romantic comedy, only with more bone saws. <laughs> Look, let's be honest, you aren't watching Flower of Flesh and Blood for the story, you're watching for the shock value. And in this regard, it delivers. Although, really what's most interesting about this particular guinea pig entry, and the one that preceded it, The Devil's Experiment, is all the surrounding insanity that's been tied to the film over the years. Hideo Nakata's ring films were all about a cursed videotape, but truthfully, Flower of Flesh and Blood is arguably tied to more weird disturbing shit than almost any film in recent memory. While many of the stories surrounding the guinea pig franchise have a vaguely apocryphal feel to them, there's a kernel of truth in pretty much all of them. The thing is, no one's 100% sure what's actually true anymore, which gives Flower of Flesh and Blood this urban legend quality that's sort of charming in an age where the answer to literally everything is a Google search away. Because of this, because of the cultural barrier wherein the first film turned up in America on grainy bootleg VHS tapes minus subtitles, and often with the framing segments of the story removed so you could get to the gore faster, Guinea Pig has always felt sort of dangerous and taboo. And while that reputation has diminished at least somewhat over the years, thanks in no small part to a DVD release courtesy of Unearthed Films that made the movie far more accessible than ever before, it still exists. People still whisper about these movies nearly 35 years after they were made. You can't buy that kind of marketing. And I know, because my day job's in marketing. It's impossible to talk about Flower of Flesh and Blood and not talk about Charlie Sheen. Sheen catapulted Hino's film in a cult film infamy way back in 1991. As the story goes, and again, it's been told and retold so many different times that it's hard to piece together all of the exact details, 
Sheen was given a copy of Flower of Flesh and Blood by friend and film threat editor Chris Gore. After watching the footage, Sheen was convinced that he'd watched a real snuff film, that the woman on camera was actually murdered and dismembered, and he contacted the FBI. Agent Dan Codling informed Sheen that there was already an investigation underway. Eventually, the feds figured out that Flower of Flesh and Blood was a movie, and many who have seen the film wonder how Sheen was ever fooled in the first place. After all, it has a title card, edits, multiple camera angles, and so on. While the dingy set and low-budget aesthetics certainly line up with what most people think genuine snuff would look like, it's clearly a film. But before we laugh at Sheen's expense, I mean, for this, feel free to continue laughing at his expense for all the other nonsense he does on a regular basis. Keep in mind that Sheen didn't see the whole film. According to David Karakis and David Slater's book, Killing for Culture, A New History of Death on Film, Sheen actually saw a compilation tape of gore scenes from a wide variety of movies. Think of it like a mixtape for gore hounds. This version was compiled by noted horror film critic Chaz Balin. Balin made the tape for a colleague, and like most bootlegs, it spread around. In this light, when viewing only certain sequences of Flower of Flesh and Blood, on a multi-generational copy of dubious quality, it's a lot easier to see why Sheen was convinced that he'd seen something real. Well, that and he was probably higher than a kite when he watched it. I mean, we're talking about Charlie Sheen here. Sheen wasn't the only one fooled either. In 1992, UK authorities arrested a man for importing a copy of Flower of Flesh and Blood. They ran with the idea that it was a real snuff film. He avoided jail time, but was fined. Meanwhile, in the late 80s, industrial band Skinny Puppy played clips from the film as the backdrop on one of their tours, and even wrote a song about the movie titled The Morn. Again, people apparently thought the footage was real. As crazy as all that is, maybe the most chilling and, oddly enough, least reported guinea pig story comes from Japan itself. In 1989, Japanese authorities arrested Tsutomo Miyazaki, an unassuming man who was eventually christened the little girl murderer for killing four young girls in the Tokyo suburbs. Reportedly an obsessive film collector, Miyazaki's extensive collection included a reported 5,700 films, including at least one guinea pig entry. While it's often been reported that the guinea pig film he owned was Flower of Flesh and Blood, which then spurred rumors that he'd killed one of his victims by mimicking the events in the film, it turns out that it was a later installment, Devil Doctor Woman. Either way, it's added to the film's dark reputation regardless. Because of this reputation, Flower of Flesh and Blood was one of the hottest commodities on the gray market tape trading scene for years. Then Unearthed Films came along and gave the series a full-on DVD release in the early 2000s. It was great to have all the films and the bonus compilation discs together in one easily purchased set, but, at the same time, seeing something like Guinea Pig on DVD really kind of kills the mood. These are the kind of films that are best viewed on dusty old VHS tapes with unreadable labels and lots of tracking issues and video grain. By today's standards, Flower of Flesh and Blood still has the ability to disturb, but viewers are far more savvy about the nature of special effects and filmmaking techniques than they were back in the late 80s. It's impossible to imagine anyone looking at this in 2019 and thinking it's anything other than a low-budget short but in its day, it sure did upset a whole lot of people. The DVDs are out of print, but this one is worth tracking down if you're a gorehound or a fan of transgressive cinema. And there you have it, Movie Maniacs, a quick review and history lesson on Hideshi Hino's guinea pig, Flower of Flesh and Blood. This film, and its predecessor, really paved the way for a lot of extreme shot-on-video horror cinema in the 80s and 90s, both in Japan and around the globe. It may not convince modern audiences that it's real, but it's still disturbing enough. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. I live to serve, so reward me with your likes and subs. I don't ask for much. Oh, and be sure to follow me on social media. You'll find the links below. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.